Hi, welcome to Believe the Bible. Jesus teaches prayer to Israel. Well, why do I say Israel when the 12 apostles said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray? Let's see what Jesus was teaching them of how to pray. You know, there's over 500 verses in the Bible dealing with prayer. I think every religion out there has some form of prayer that they pray to someone or something. <laughs> but, but Jesus himself is giving instructions to answer the question, Lord, teach us to pray. We turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. He says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now this part of the prayer can be prayed by anyone at any time on the planet and any time there was a person on the planet. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's exalting God the Father. Great verse. Verse 10 says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, now we're getting a little bit more in depth in the prayer. This verse is a prophetic verse. And he is saying that they should pray for the future on earth to be like it is in heaven. And so that's what the kingdom was about. The kingdom was to be a kingdom on earth. That was promised to Abraham, that he would have a, a seed that would be blessed coming through Christ, uh, and then a land that would be given, a promised land that, that he never received, and that would be in the future. So this is prophetic. This is not to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not in the uh, Gospel of Matthew, especially in this prayer that's being prayed. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. No, I think our prayer would be, Lord, thank you for our bread and our daily bread and uh, that you have given us. Um, but to pray to the Lord to give us our daily bread, think about it. If you were to pray that prayer and, and to actually take it into action, you would do nothing about getting bread. You would wait for the Lord to provide you, just like he did with manna in the uh, Old Testament in the wilderness. So this is what he was saying. That's why when he said to sell all, you know, the little flock, to get rid of everything that you have and to rely on him and seek ye first the kingdom of God, because all these things will be added unto you, food, clothing, these things. This goes along with it. Give us this day our daily bread. That was a prayer for Israel uh, during the time that the kingdom was announced for Israel about to go into the kingdom. They were to sell all and have nothing, and they were going to rely on the Lord providing for them. That makes sense. Next verse. Going along with this verse is later in the chapter, verse 25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? And he goes on further to say that your Heavenly Father knows you have the need of these things. Well, this is the thing. When he tells you to sell everything and you don't have anything, then it has to be provided somewhere. And that just makes sense in the whole process of the kingdom gospel, the kingdom coming in, selling all they had, and uh, looking for that kingdom on earth, as this prayer says. Next verse. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Well, if we know the gospel of the grace of God, we know that once we believe and put our trust in the gospel that Jesus gave to Paul for us today, that is, that we believe and trust that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shedding his blood, was buried, and rose again. When we put our trust in that and that alone, then we're saved for all eternity. And we have our sins, our trespasses, all forgiven. It's not a conditional forgiveness. But Israel did have a conditional forgiveness, as you see this verse say. Verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, anyone, in a sense, could pray this prayer, but it's really meant for the kingdom saints, for those going through the tribulation. And so you can see, we have to be careful. That's why we need to rightly divide God's word. Because even though Jesus himself was saying it out of his own mouth and giving instructions on how to pray, most of this prayer is not for us, the body of Christ. Then look in the next two verses, verses 14 and 15. This doesn't apply to us. Verse 14, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men your trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Now you've got to see that that's not a condition that we're under, under at this point in time. And this is the way Paul puts it. Ephesians 1.7 
by whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 4.32 Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You see, we're already forgiven all our trespasses, as Colossians 2.13 says, and we don't need to forgive others to get forgiven, because we are forgiven through Christ, His shed blood, His work on the cross, and our belief in that, and our trust in that. That's what saves us and gets our sins forgiven. Not forgiving other, other people. That's not the way we get our sins forgiven. So, do you pray this prayer, Our Father who art in heaven? And uh, I know I did it in uh, one of my older religions 50 years ago, but uh, that no, no longer, this, this prayer just doesn't apply to the body of Christ. He's talking to the kingdom saints, and it's a correct, right prayer. But it's a correct, right prayer for those people at the right time uh, that it was applied to. Thank you for your time. You have a good day.